question, please tell me. Um, so um, uh, today the talk is about um, oxygen delivery system uh, for pediatric patients. And uh, it is will be um, one of the series of questions that I hope we, we all uh, do together. And it will follow by um, uh, maybe uh, uh, ventilation and respiratory respiration monitor, and also about CPAP, about uh, uh, ventilation. And then uh, at the end, I hope that I can do um, real uh, uh, respiratory problems like asthma or uh, bronchiolitis or upper airway management or RDS and other problems that need uh, ventilation and care. So today talk is about oxygen delivery systems. It's not about oxygen therapy. It's about how we deliver oxygen to the patient. So the objectives of today, we will give some general tips and then we'll talk about the blow by and uh, we'll talk about nasal cannula both uh, when using um, high flow and low flow. Um, and also we'll talk about something called micro flow, although it's not mentioned here. And we'll talk about different type of mask, symbol mask and all its types, venturi and non-venturi. We'll talk about the partial rebreathing mask and non-rebreathing mask. We'll talk about the enclosure system uh, like hoods and tents of delivering oxygen. And at the end, we'll talk about, um, um, at the end, we'll talk about uh, uh, ventilation bags like self-inflation bag and flow inflation bags. The talk, I hope it will take about 30 minutes. So let's start with the first one, which is the general tips. So always when we use oxygen, it should be humidified because if you don't humidify it, that's mean you will deliver dried uh, flow, which will cause a dry the secretion and it might obstruct air airway. No oxygen should be used without pulse oximetry to check the level. Because remember the oxygen is a toxic substance. It's a therapeutic, but it's very dangerous. So you do not need to give extra oxygen that is not required. So having a pulse oximetry before you deliver oxygen to the baby is very vital. Uh, to the start, and especially if the child is not uh, familiar uh, with the hospital or health facility, it's the best to give the parent or any companion with the patient to hold the oxygen source in a proximity of the patient until that patient calm down. A nasal prong or nasal cannula is usually preferred over uh, face mask oxygen delivery. As long as oxygen uh, delivery is adequate, because remember, uh, nasal prong is not a good way to deliver oxygen. It always has a limit. So when you reach 30 or uh, 30 or um, uh, 45 percent of oxygen, nasal cannula will not be enough. But if you can and the oxygen delivery is enough, use nasal prong. The oxygen itself is not inflammable. However, the other material that is near the oxygen source will be inflammable. Things like hair, skin, oil, clothing, furniture, they can catch fire very easy um, um, uh, at the lower the normal temperature. So keep patient on oxygen therapy or the store cylinders away at least one and a half meter away from any open source of flame or heat, um, um, including the electrical device. Um, if oxygen cylinder are used, they should be secured to prevent fall, to prevent rapid leak, and um, the regulator or the top of that, it might be dislodged. So always remember to uh, take care of that. And um, the uh, cylinder can become like a muscle if the propelled, if the regulator or the valve is opened. And remember, there is two types of cylinders. The cylinders with a valve that called NICU, and that valve uh, can control and regulate the amount of the pressure released from the cylinder. 
What does that mean? The, um, the cylinder at the beginning is full of gas. That's why the flow will be very high. But as time goes, the pressure in the cylinder will drop. So what that NICU valve can do is tighten the valve at the beginning and relax it um, um, as time goes. So it always delivers the same flow, whether the uh, cylinder is full or it's, it's up to, um, or it's um, uh, at the end of time when it become empty. Um, so that's valve very important. You have to know if that NICU valve is in your cylinder or not. And always these cylinders need to be monitored and exchanged and their valves and regulator are secured. They are very important to know that the, the, the valves are working to prevent the propelling. And as I said, the cylinder can be like muscle if, if the propel is working. Um, and sometimes these cylinders are overpressurized, so they are potential. They can explode and uh, can cause um, exactly like bumps. Um, the percentage of oxygen um, where you set is totally different from the measure. What does that mean? So you put a baby on 25% oxygen. That does not mean that the baby will receive 25 because that's the set, not the measure. Usually the measure, we measure it at the oropharynx um, and, and that measured oxygen depend on many factors. These factors is depend which type of device you're using to deliver oxygen. And what even if the same device, who's the manufacturing the device, there should be a table for these uh, device uh, uh, to give you the approximate uh, number of oxygen uh, that the baby or the child or the uh, peds are, are receiving. Um, also, um, the, the um, oxygen supply depends on the flow because remember when you de deliver oxygen to, the, to a, um, a patient, it's of two types, either oxygen dependent on flow or you use oxygen in blender where you blend the oxygen with medical air. So the medical air will provide the flow and the oxygen source will provide only the oxygen. So whether you are using a flow uh, to measure the oxygen without a blender or using a blender to blend air or medical air and oxygen, that will give you how much the baby or a child will receive an oxygen. Um, also uh, the oxygen uh, received by the baby uh, delivered by mask is different from the oxygen received by the delivered by nasal bronch. And it's important also to make sure that whether there is a fit, and we'll talk about how we fit a mask and when the leak can happen. So remember these factors will affect the amount of oxygen received by a patient, not exactly matching the number set by the machine. So very important to remember, there is a set oxygen number and there is measured oxygen number. The set is when you turn the knobs and the button of a machine to deliver oxygen and the measure is the amount of uh, oxygen received by baby at the oropharynx. And this table uh, gives you an idea about what I was talking about. So this is um, an example of flow rate liter per minute. And, um, and, and the percentage of oxygen we are providing. So we are blending the flow by medical air and oxygen percent. So we have two sources and there is air oxygen blender. So if we put the oxygen on 100% and we give a flow of one, you, the measured oxygen will be 66. Now these numbers are not exact, maybe more or less. But if the flow is 0.25 liter per minute, the baby will receive only 34%. And if you use 0.75 liter with 40%, the baby or the child or the patient will receive only 25%. So these are the number you set. These are the, the oxygen concentration and these are the flow. However, the patient will receive these numbers. So it's very important to remember between the uh, set numbers and the measured numbers. And when you use the uh, flow or medical air to deliver oxygen, um, you need air oxygen blender, which blend the oxygen with the air. So you can see this is an air and it's 
measure the flow and this uh, gauge measures the percentage of oxygen. And you will have, you can see here, you have two sources. And always remember the medical air is black color. The tube for medical air is a black color and the tube for oxygen source is a white color. Um, um, and that's international. So the tube, and also even if you are using a central medical air or a central oxygen supply, even the hole on the wall will be white and black. So you have a black for medical air, white for oxygen, uh, yellow for suction, and I think purple for inhaled nitric oxide. So this air oxygen blending device blend the air from the flow, that air will give you the flow, and this gauge will give you the percentage of oxygen, the result that we showed you on the table. So it's always remember, um, sometimes you don't need to use the air oxygen blender, you depend uh, you take the flow from the source of oxygen. So the percent, the number of the, the, the number of the flow will give you the percentage of oxygen. While here, the flow will affect the um, the percentage of oxygen, but will not determine it. So again, there is two ways of delivering oxygen. There is only oxygen source and flow depend on medical air. So you need air oxygen blender, and there is. Um, an oxygen delivered to the patient depend on the oxygen. So the oxygen source will give the flow and the percentage. So, and then the percentage of oxygen depend on the flow. So if you want more oxygen, you have to give more flow, which is not a good idea. But this one is a wonderful idea because you can give at whatever percentage you want and whatever flow you want. Now, uh, th this is um, a table that um, uh, lists and uh, um, all the uh, sources of oxygen uh, delivery device, and we will go uh, through it one by one. Um, this is just a table to remember, and, and at the end of the lecture, I hope that all of you guys know what I'm talking about. So let's start with the first one, which is uh, blow by, or what does blow by mean? Being uh, non-contact, mean blowing. Blowing is, uh, removing, it's like, like the blower when you, um, at fall or uh, at um, autumn, when you remove, you use the blower to remove the leaves or, or, or what we call it wafting. And wafting means um, uh, nasma or in Arabic, nasma or, or um, 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 rihat hawa or whatever the name is. So, um, which means that blowing or non-contact or wafting uh, or blow by is providing oxygen without contact to the patient. So you put the oxygen source about a um, um, few centimeters away from the, uh, uh, from the uh, uh, mouth and the nose of the patient and hoping that uh, uh, the oxygen will receive to reach to the baby. Um, this way of giving oxygen is always used for temporary providing of oxygen, especially for infant and toddlers. When they come first time to the hospital, they are not familiar with the situation, they are distressed and they may be agitated. So giving the oxygen source to the caregiver or the companion or the, or the parent and putting that in a close proximity to the, uh, to the face of the patient is a good idea to calm the patient uh, down. And it's always a good idea to use it when you start to first evaluate any patient with respiratory distress like um, uh, bronchospasm or, or croup. Now, there are many ways to deliver the blow by. The first one using tubing and the second one using corrugate tubing or using symbol mask or um, using um, oxygen tubing to styrofoam or paper drinking. We'll talk about each one. We'll talk about each one in detail, what they mean. Um, and they provide low oxygen. So remember, blow by or non-contact oxygen delivery always give you less concentration, always less than 30%. If you need more than 30% and your SAT monitor is always down, less than 90%, then you need to use other means. So remember, it's for low oxygen requirement and it's the initial way of giving oxygen. It's not only these uh, 
only only this means or these ways to give a blow by oxygen, but you can use self-inflated and blow bag to uh, give oxygen. You can use also a mask uh, because um, um, it, it, it is always better to avoid the self-inflated uh, because it has one-way valve and we will talk about its non-rebreathing valve. We'll talk about this later, but you can use, still you can use if you adjust it, but it's not a good idea to use it. Now we talked about uh, a styrofoam cups. A styrofoam is a substance used to uh, for ready-made food, like um, a styrofoam box for hamburger, styrofoam cups. So these cups, um, what you do, you take these cups and you use the tube and pierce it at the end and put it near the baby. So um, we have some tubes, uh, some cups, it looks like very familiar to children. They are uh, with the cartoon painting, they are different colors. So, um, and when you use it, you can calm down the, uh, the, the patient because they are very familiar to them and they don't look uh, uh, so distressing. So styrofoam uh, cups are very good way to start giving oxygen to very agitated patients, especially those with the croup, or those with uh, epiglutitis that you don't, you, don't, you need to calm them down. And this is a good way to calm them down by using styrofoam cups. The other way of giving is using corrugate tube. These tubes have, uh, um, 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 have a zigzag shape and they are bending and they are very, uh, uh, very flexible. So they can be bent, they can be, and then you put them near proximity of the face. The other way, this is an example of giving the uh, oxygen blue by by corrugate tube. We can use it not only for human, we can use it for, for obviously for animal. Um, you can use a simple mask to give blue by oxygen. And it's very important to remember type of mask you're using. So you cannot use self-inflated bag unless you adjust it. You can use flow inflated, but also you have to do some adjustments. But when you use a symbol mask, and we'll talk about what symbol mask means, um, uh, we can give blow by oxygen. Uh, so this is a, a kind of symbol mask. You can use, you can see that you have exhalation uh, port and you can see you have something like barrel here. We'll talk about it later. And you can um, uh, you can see the stripper in here, and you can see um, um, the nose fit here. So this one can be used uh, for uh, delivering blue by oxygen because you don't have a valve, you don't have it's not non rebreathing and have no reservoir, so it's easy to deliver the blue by. Um, the difference between, there are two types of symbol mask. There is this one, which they call it non-venturi, and there is the venturi, uh, 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 venturi symbol mask. And the difference between symbol mask is they have a regulator, and this regulator determine the flow. So you can use a white color uh, regulator to give you 31%. But you can use different color if you want a different percent of oxygen. And this, um, sorry, I've always been interrupted by newcomers. Um, so you can see that this barrel or Venturi barrels is connected in here and it determine the flow and hence determine how much oxygen you are receiving. Um, so the difference between symbol mask is this. This, you can see that it's, there is no valve inside it, so it cannot regulate its symbol mask. But this one is also a symbol mask, but have a regulator. And um, uh, this will determine the flow. That's why they call it Venturi mask or multi-flow uh, symbol mask. This one, usually we do not use it for blow by. You can use it only when you really want to provide oxygen with certain flow. And the flow will determine your sat monitor. So whatever your sat monitor, you can change the, the barrel to give the uh, match oxygen requirement for the patient. Uh, um, so to sum up, um, uh, 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 the, uh, if you want to use the flow inflation um, anesthesia ventilation bag that is connected to oxygen co source and the valve that control the amount of air 
in the back is closed, then you can provide blue by oxygen by uh, flow inflation back. Okay, but when you give non-contact blow by oxygen, uh, remember to put the flow more than 10 liter per minute. You should not use Venturi, okay? Because if you use Venturi, the flow will determine how much oxygen you're getting. So Venturi is always needed when there is a good seal. So Venturi is no, should not be used for um, a blow by oxygen. Um, and so what you do is you have oxygen source, you put the, um, the, uh, the flow more than or equal to 10 liter per minute and you use either simple mask or use larger cup. And um, the, um, the flow, if you have a reservoir and we'll talk about reservoir, reservoir when the baby or a patient breathes in and then breathe out, the air will go to the reservoir. And if there is no good flow, that air will be rebreathed. So the whole idea of rebreathe is to avoid. So remember, if you have a reservoir and you want to give, to give um, um, oxygen by non-contact, you should have a high flow. You can reach up to 15 liter per minute. And the reason for that, if the flow is low, the patient will rebreathe the exhaled um, uh, a gas that went to the reservoir. So you have two options, either to increase the flow or use one-way valve which means that the only air will go from the reservoir to the a mask to the patient. Then somebody will ask why you're using the reservoir. The reason for using the reservoir is when the patient need more flow than 15 liter or 10 liter that you're providing because when the patient is exhaling, the flow will continue and fill the reservoir. And when the patient is try to inhale again in, uh, will use whatever in that reservoir. So remember to use um, a blow by by uh, um, a mask, you need to remember to increase the flow. Second, you should not have a flow regulator. Third, if you are using a reservoir, if you are using a reservoir, remember to use either one-way valve or using high flow. And the reservoir is always should be a reservoir that is close proximity to the uh, patient face and the reservoir should not be open reservoir because remember the reservoirs are of two types. It's a tube like uh, or with open end. Um, it's about like um, half a meter uh, length and usually it's a corrugated tube um, uh, or uh, that's not a good uh, reservoir to be used with blow by oxygen. So always try to use a closed end uh, reservoir. Um, and um, again, a reservoir should have a valve either one way, and if there is no valve, you should have using uh, high flow to prevent rebreathing. Uh, when you give oxygen, of course, whether blue by or any source, you always should monitor the um, oxygen saturation. Now, when you change, when you change to using um, 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 alternative way, First, if you need more than 30%, remember, blow by will not give you more than 30%. Second, this way of gi uh, giving oxygen cannot be used for a long time. It's a just temporary way of giving. It's a way to calm down the patient. It's a, a way to collect resources until you have more uh, competent way to give uh, the oxygen. Um, um, so when they, um, you, let's say you need the oxygen for more than 30 minutes, you have always to look for other way to deliver the oxygen to the baby or to the patient. The second way of giving oxygen is nasal cannula. What is nasal cannula? Nasal cannula, it's, about, it's, a, it's, it's a tube, non-corrugated, and you have two soft brongs. These brongs inserted to the patient anterior nares. And there are two types, they are low flow and they're high flow. However, there is the other type we call it that I make it very small, we call it micro flow, we'll talk about it. So the oxygen flows from the cannula to the patient nasopharynx. And the oxygen in the nasopharynx mixed with room air. And therefore, the delivery varies depend on the respiratory rate. So if you have high respiratory rate, you will get less oxygen delivery because you're mixing more and more and more. Tidal volume and the flow rate. So if you want more oxygen, you have to give more flow. 
And when you put it in the nose and the baby is always crying, there will be always leak. So the amount of oxygen the patient getting and uh, when you monitor the sat, despite you are giving adequate flow, you might not get the measured oxygen that you are looking for because the mouth is open. So remember to monitor the respiratory rate, the tidal volume, the flow, and whether the mouth is open or not when using nasal prong. And this is the way you put the nasal prong. There are different sizes to suit all the uh, uh, different age groups of, of pediatrics. Uh, now, the nasal is either low flow or high flow. The low flow is uh, we use 100% oxygen and we use air oxygen blender. The, the, so therefore there is oxygen and there is medical air. The medical air in low flow nasal cannula usually flow in one to two lit, one to four liter per minute. And usually the oxygen given is 100%. And the, oxy, the resulted oxygen concentration from a flow of a medical air of one to four liter per minute and 100% oxygen blended, it will give us concentration measured one, 25 to 40%, depending as we said on the respiratory rate, tidal volume or mouth uh, opening. And remember, flow of more than two liters are very irritant. So if you want to use more than, you need a humidifier and you need a heated, you cannot use cold oxygen source. You need humidifier, you need heated. And remember, if you use more than two and use it for a prolonged time, you cause dryness of the nasal and may cause bleeding and even may cause perforation of the septum. And therefore, any flow more than two liters per minute is not recommended for a newborn, especially for a premature. The other problem with the nasal bronch, when you give higher flow, like more four or more, you start to give some distension pressure. What distension pressure means, means CPAP. So you are giving actually CPAP, but you're not measuring it. So that's the danger. You can get complication of the CPAP. You get stenting of airways. You can get air trapping and you're not measuring it. You don't know. So whenever you are giving more than four liter, remember that there is a CPAP, there is a distension pressure. So remember more than flow, you need humidification, you need uh, temperature control, you need to heat, and you need to remember that there is a distension pressure. Now there is always question uh, uh, when we use CPAP or use um, a high flow, which one is beneficial? We'll talk about it. But when you use uh, 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 low flow, uh, um, we use when the patient need less oxygen requirement. What is the benefit of nasal bronch, whether it's high flow or nasal flow, it's very lightweight. So it's not like mask and so heavy. It's very expensive and inexpensive and it's very mobile. And it gives you better access to the face and mouth. So if you can use for uh, um, advancing feeding tube, taking care of the mouth. Um, so it gives you um, a better uh, way to uh, uh, access the mouth and therefore uh, using nasal prong will not interrupt the feeding. Uh, however, the problem with low flow is the patient when patient is, is uh, very sick. So stabilizing a patient who is very sick with low flow nasal bronch is not a good idea. The microflow, what does it mean? Um, the microflow, there are some patients that are very long on oxygen. They don't need much of oxygen, but they can decide easily, especially when they get feeding or they get apnea during sleep. So they need a little bit of oxygen. So we start to use something called uh, microflow. And what's microflow? Using blending. Again, blending means use a medical air for flow and oxygen for uh, oxygen source. So we blend 100% oxygen with a flow of 0.01 liter to 0.5 liter per minute using air oxygen blender. And the result of oxygen depend on the flow. So you can give up to 22%, like a little bit, or 23%, 25% depend on the flow you're using. Uh, therefore, uh, a microflow used for weaning from oxygen therapy, used for chronic oxygen therapy, and sometimes we use it for uh, home oxygen therapy. The good things for that is you need very little flow so the tube can, lost, can uh, last for 
weeks. So it gives you what you want, but also it lasts longer. Um, so that's what um, uh, um, what exactly in some situation you need. And the microflow, it exactly works like a multi-flow Venturi mask. So you have like a, a way of multi-flow by controlling uh, the type. When you put a type of Venturi barrels in the, in the tube, it's a kind of valve that control the flow. It's exactly like using blending air with oxygen. Uh, the high flow is the problem here and the question and confusion between CPAP and high flow. So first, if you use high flow, you need heated, humidified oxygen. That is not a must in low flow or micro flow. But remember, when it's more than two liter, think of heating and humidification. There are many types of uh, devices we use for high flow. There is the VABOTherm, there is comfort flow. In our institute, we use the OptiFlow. And remember, we use um, less than eight liter when you use high flow for infants, and we use less than, um, uh, uh, the number is not here, uh, it's 60 liter per minute, uh, my apology. So um, in infant, we use high flow less than eight liter per minute, while in children and adult, we can use up to 60, 60, 60 liter per minute. Um, so this is the VABOTherm, and you can see um, it provides heat, it provides uh, humidification, it provides warning of different signs and control. We're not going to talk about the specific machine, but this is an example of the uh, high flow VABOTherm. And this is a connected to the baby, a hypotherm, uh, hypotherm high flow uh, nasal uh, prong. This is comfort flow, and you can see that you have a humidifier, you have a heater, and you have oxygen source, and you have a medical air source, and you have the control, and, and you can see the prong is here. Uh, they use first the corrugate tube connected to a tube, and um, usually it's of different size. And there is the OptiFlow, it's almost same principle, it's just um, our institute opt to use that, uh, so it's exactly same principle. The difference here is the machine are smaller and it's more portable. Um, so um, in, um, in respiratory distress or in respiratory failure uh, and need for uh, low oxygen, High flow is the is the uh, is the uh, your option, uh, but if the patient needs less than thirty percent oxygen, the low flow is your option. So, high flow is used in respiratory distress or respiratory failure, and uh, you need a high flow humidified nasal. It's much better tolerated than uh, face mask oxygen. Because remember, if you want to give more than 30%, you use a less than they use a blow by. If you want more than, you have to use mask. You have to use mask. Uh, but mask, you cannot use it for a long time. The reason because you don't have access to the face. So you go to the low flow if you need less than 30% instead of blow by. But if you need more than 30%, you go for high flow. So using high flow, not in comparison with CPAP using high flow compare and compare with blow by or low flow because always there is confusion it's oh, it works yes but you cannot compare it to CPAP so it's associated with decreased respiratory rate and decreased work of breathing and it's better oxygenation compared to the low flow in a premature infant with RDS in a bronchiolitis or in adult with or, or um, adolescent with hypoxemic resp respiratory failure now it's very important here, very important point to differentiate between CPAP and high flow. High, high flow cannot use for hypercarbia. So if you are not sure to use high flow or CPAP, do blood gas. If the CO2 is high, then you cannot use high flow. It's very important to remember that a high flow is only meant for oxygenation, not for removing CPAP. The second point is when you give high flow, you are giving distension pressure. So you're giving distension, you're giving CPAP, but you don't know how much. So complication is a little bit higher and therefore it's not advisable to be used in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in babies or in children less than two years. 
it's very important to remember high flow is for non hypercarpia patient it's only for oxygen it's only for hypoxia it's not for ventilation while cpap is oxygenation and ventilation that's very important to remember so in hypercarbia CPAP may be avoid the need for ETT. So when you have hypercarbia and need oxygen, remember to use CPAP because you can avoid intubation and it's preferred, a preferred way of giving um, 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 oxygen over the high flow oxygen therapy. And be careful when you use high flow oxygen therapy in acute respiratory insufficiency in infant because it's always associated not for oxygen, uh, it's associated with high CO2. And also, it might, um, some of the respiratory problem like um, bronchiolitis or asthma, you might have air trapping. So, and then giving uh, some sort of PEEP that, or CPAP that you are not measuring, it might give you a problem. So, it always to be very conscious about selecting high flow. Because I have some question from some of our colleagues whether we use CPAP, why we are not using um, 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 high flow. These are the problems. Hypercarbia and distension pressure that you don't measure. So you need to be ca very careful for diseases that can cause air trapping, like meconium aspiration, like bronchiolitis, like asthma. And therefore, because of all that, high flow oxygen therapy is very controversial in uh, in neonatology, especially in first week. And maybe you can use it for chronic babies, especially for those uh, using CPAP for a long time and they need sedation to tolerate, it's better tolerated. And um, so you can give it a try, but usually we don't prefer to use it in the first few weeks. We usually prefer to use it later on after 28 days or more. So we talked about blow by, we talked about nasal prong, and we told nasal prong, we said high flow, low flow, and micro flow. Now we're talking about mask, not mask used for blow by, but mask used a contact way. And they are the most frequent used uh, oxygen delivery system. And they only used for not sick baby, they use only for spontaneously breathing. When you use mask, remember to fit over the patient's nose and mouth. And you should secure it by using appropriate strap. And you need to have a variety of sizes when uh, selecting a patient. And use only the transparent mask. And remember, um, they are very difficult for anxious patients, especially those uncooperative, especially on the first arrival. And remember, in babies who are at risk of uh, vomiting, they can aspirate it because the, when you strap it on the mouth, it's very enclosed space. So the vomitants can stay there, especially for um, uh, pediatric patients less than one year, they can get aspiration, aspiration after vomiting. So these are the problem in anxious baby and vomiting, and you need to have very um, uh, fit uh, and they need to be transparent. Um, other consideration is um, 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 fit and remember whether you are using reservoir or not. Why this is important? Because let's say one example, you're putting a mask with a flow of 10 liter per minute and the patient inhaled in. If the flow of 10 liter per minute is not enough, the patient has nowhere to take um, uh, air. So when there is no reservoir, you have to use a higher flow. But when there is a reservoir, especially if it's one way, when the baby exhale and goes from exhalation hole, the flow continue. So it will fill the reservoir and the patient will inhale later on from the reservoir if the flow is not enough. So when you have a reservoir, you don't need high flow. And that's very important for your hospital resources because you can use less flow when you use a reservoir. And therefore, we're talking about the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the mask or different types. Um, there is symbol one, 
and the symbol can be venturi or non-venturi, and there is partial rebreathing, or there is non-rebreathing, and we'll talk about it. The oxygen mask should be directed to the toward the uh, 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 to the to the patient and should be uh, uh, um, patent, and the flow should be directed to the uh, mouth and nose. The diffuser system of the mask, which is the area where the tube connect to the mask, should be directed to the uh, patient mouth and nose and should be patent, always should be checked because you can give a flow and you, it, it, it's not patent uh, for any reason like accumulation of sodium or a dirt or dust. The benefit of the mask, also, although the, the, the evidence are very limited, you can give wide, wide range of oxygen. Remember nasal cannula, it gives you only about 30% of oxygen, while mask gives you much higher. It can give you up to 90%. So you can use in either way. And when you simple mask, you can avoid rebreathing because you have a flow and you have um, two opening at the end where the patient can exhale. So you're not accumulating CPAP. The other important point is the patient, because of these two opening, is not breathing against the flow. So when he inhaled, the flow goes in, but when he exhaled, it goes out. So he's not breathing like the nasal prong because the nasal prong, when he's breathing in, it's flow go in, but when he's breathing out, it will be against the tube. So that's the other benefit. It decreases the work of breathing better than the nasal prong. So if you have increased work of breathing on a nasal prong, you have two options, either change it to a mask or use CPAP because CPAP has a generator in the nose which work exactly like the holes at the side of the mask. So again, the benefit of the mask are gives you wide range of oxygen uh, concentration. Second, you can avoid rebreathing and accumulation of CO2. There are special type of mask that you can use it for positive pressure ventilation or hand ventilation. If you are not intubated or you're preparing for intubation and you have a respiratory failure, you can use this mask and give PBV using self inflated or flow inflated and um, you uh, seal and fit the mask very well to the face. Now, uh, the simple mask, um, I, I want to stress on this um, um, example is Venturi. The important of Venturi is fit loosely over the nose and the mouth, but you can see that there is um, adjustable nose clip that decrease and increase the size. You can have two opening on either side for exhalation, and you have the Venturi barrels that direct the air from the tube to the patient, to the diffuser and to the nose and the mouth. And this barrel is of different flow. So you can use it on milk. If you don't have this barrel, then it's a simple mask. Uh, this is a simple mask, again, of Venturi type. You can see different type. You can see the strap and you can see the barrel connected here. The importance of the mask or simple mask is the space between the mask and the mouth can work sometime as a reservoir. However, this reservoir is not big. Second, the hole, the side hole on the size should have like a sort of valve, one way valve. So um, it, it will, uh, otherwise it will not work as a reservoir. And because of that, the exhaled gas escape through these exhalation holes on either side. If you relax the valve a little bit, some of the room air will enter uh, from the room to the, ma the mask and there therefore it can mix up the oxygen with the uh, flow and thereby decreasing the percentage of oxygen delivered to the patient. So if you have a control 
or valves that control these holes, you can control the mixing or rebreathing. So if you are opening it, there will be no non rebreathing and it will not work as a reservoir. If you close it, it will be rebreathing. And it will mix the flow coming from the tube with the rebreathing. But important to remember about the rebreathing, when the patient exhale, the first uh, air comes out is the airs and the dead space. And this air usually low CO2. So it's not, um, you have to remember that when using rebreathing valve, that most of this air is with less CO2. However, when you open, but if you want to give more oxygen and you close these valves, you get better oxygenation, but remember your CO2 might go up. So opening or closing, um, it have benefit and advantage. You close, you get better oxygenation, but more CO2. You open, you get less oxygenation, but less CO2. Um, so if you have rebreathing, rebreathing, you have rebreathing, which means the room air is not coming. Your holes are closed. It's recommended to use more than five liter. And the reason for that, you replace the air. Because when the air comes out, it will not be enough. The patient will exhale it and there will be enough flow to replace that air and the patient will not rebreathe it. So again, if you want to use it as a rebreathing, a simple mask, as a rebreathing mask, you need to give high, high flow. By that, you will empty, because, the, because if it's a high flow, the air, the exhaled air will go from the side knob. If the flow is low and is not pushed away from the mask outside through exhalation holes, uh, you will rebreathe it and your CO2 will go up. So simple mask is usually for patient needed um, moderate amount of oxygen, but it gives you more concentration than nasal prong. The precise, uh, uh, the precise concentration, however, is unreliable. You cannot measure it. It's not like nasal prong. Nasal prong, when it's set on a percentage of our oxygen, it's much better reliable measure. So you can say it might be um, the set and the measured oxygen is not that far. However, in the mask, the set and the measured oxygen is much higher. I, the difference, I mean, is much higher. Now we'll talk about rebreathing. I will talk about it a little bit, what rebreathing means. A rebreathing mask is single mask. Sorry, somebody is, um, um, somebody opened his mic. Uh, I closed it again. Um, so, people are keep going in and out. Um, so, simple mask is a mask with a reservoir. And because it's a reservoir, it will keep the exhaled gas. And because it's keep it, the patient will rebreathe it. So, it's a full rebreathing or partial rebreathing. It depends on how many valves you have. So, because you have two openings, if you use one for exhalation and one for not, it's partial rebreathing. So, if you have one exhalation valve and one rebreathing valve, then it's a partial. So, partial rebreathing valve is a simple mask with a reservoir. Oxygen concentration. Uh, because you are using reservoir and you are preventing air from coming in, then you'll use, you can get higher percentage of oxygen. So use 10 to 12 liter per minute, you give you about 50 to 60. Okay, there's some question here. Okay. I have a message. Okay, so can you please close your camera? Um, I close all the camera, but during you can reactivate it always, but please close your camera for the convenience of other. So again, simple mask or 
partial rebreathing mask is a simple mask with a reservoir. And why is rebreathing? Because the exhaled air goes to the reservoir, stay there, and you breathe it again. And because there is no air coming in, because it's one-way valve that allows to, air to go out, not in, um, then the percentage of oxygen will be higher. And if it's complete rebreathing, both holes are having one-way valve, allow out, does not allow in. If it's partial, then only one. So that one is free to go in and out, and the other one is uh, only one way. And because you're rebreathing, then you get more oxygen. But remember, because you are rebreathing, um, uh, uh, your CO2 might go up. So therefore, the bigger the reservoir is, the less CO2 will go up. So if you want to use rebreathing, it's better to use um, a bigger uh, a bigger uh, reservoir. But when you use a bigger reservoir, you need a higher flow. So the air is drawn during inspiration predominantly from fresh oxygen inflow and the reservoir. And the, uh, the entrainment of room air through the exhalation port is minimized. Gas in the reservoir is oxygen rich with some exhaled gas. I hope this is clear now. Um, Ill exhaled air that flow into the reservoir from the uh, respiratory dead space, as we talked, has um, in the mouth and the upper way, is still oxygen rich because it didn't reach alveoli, the alveoli didn't use it, and have little oxygen because it didn't reach alveoli and there is no uh, oxygen and CO2 in it. So even if we are rebreathing, but we are rebreathing actually the dead space, which has higher oxygen because not used at the alveoli, and high less CO2 because it's not exchanged at the alveoli. Um, the most important point when you use a reservoir, you have to use a flow that prevent the reservoir from collapsing. If the reservoir is collapsing during inspiration, then your flow is not good. Then your oxygen is not as required and your CO2 will go up. If you want to use low flow and you don't have the high flow, then take off your reservoir. But again, your percentage of oxygen will, will go high. So if you're using um, 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 a reservoir, you need to use good flow above um, at point where the uh, reservoir is not collapsing. Um, so to minimize rebreathing, as we said, uh, it depends on the way you set the, your, your machine. So the more you open exhalation valve, the less, CO, the less CO2 you will get. If you close it, then you get more CO2. So your exhalation valve at the site will determine how much CO2 rebreathing you are. A partial rebreathing mask is used primarily to conserve oxygen during, and it's better, best used during transport or for patients who are needing CO2 high and have no ventilation problem because he's breathing fast. So if the patient is breathing fast and has no CO2 problem, you use uh, partial rebreathing. Partial rebreathing, again, one of the side knob has a valve that is one way, um, allow air to go out, but prevent to go in. And that's why always the CO2 will accumulate. A partial rebreathing mask, uh, oxygen can deliver is more reliable than simple mask, and it dilute, um, uh, uh, it dilute, uh, it, it, uh, the air inside diluted by room air. But it's still, and this is an example of the, um, so you can have exhalation port here, and there is another exhalation valve. But this one has no valve, because the air is free to go in and out, but this one has one way exhalation valve, and that's why it's, um, 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 it is um, uh, a partial rebreathing. If there is exhalation valve on both sides, it's a complete rebreathing. It, it's a non-rebreathing, sorry, non-rebreathing because, no, it's a complete rebreathing because there is no mixing. Um, and there is also another valve that allow the, uh, uh, the flow to go directly to the, to the patient and any exhalation will be collected in the uh, reservoir. And if the uh, flow is not enough, the patient will rebreathe from the um, from the reservoir. Now, non-rebreathing mask, as we said, we need higher flow. Non-rebreathing 
um, as mean that you don't have exhalation. You have two ways opening. Air can go up and down. However, your oxygen will be always less, but you need high flow. Again, same, I don't want to go to this again. And this is non-rebreathing mask. You can see that there is no, uh, um, um, uh, there is no valve and the air can go um, in and out and there is always fresh air going, so you are not rebreathing. But otherwise, the other uh, part of the is example is exactly match the partial non-rebreathing. Non the other system that we use is the enclosure system. Uh, enclosure system is, um, is, is you enclose the, uh, the oxygen, enclose the patient, either the patient as a whole or at the face and, and the mouth. Uh, I mean the nose and the mouth. And they are of two types. Um, uh, they are the hood and their tents. And, and hood is a clear plastic cylinder around the mouth. It can give you concentration up to um, 8 to 90 percent. You need a higher, of course, high flow between 10 to 15 liter and the oxygen enter the hood and the patient um, can breathe and there is always opening at the neck so the patient um, um, can um, uh, uh, have a fresh air from the uh, room air. Um, um, usually it's very well tolerated. Uh, usually um, we used to use it when there is pneumothorax but not the, anymore. We don't use it anymore because we, we thought that it gives you less pressure and but give you good oxygen and if give you higher oxygen, uh, the patient will absorb the oxygen and that will fasten the recovery from pneumothorax, but there is no evidence, so we stopped doing that. And this is an example of the, uh, of the hood. You can see um, uh, the air or the oxygen source um, connected to that and it's transparent and there is opening uh, near the uh, neck for fresh air. Uh, the tent, there ways, I don't think, um, um, it's sometimes used for, for sick patient, uh, very frustrated patient. It's a clear plastic shell surrounding the child's whole body. It can provide up to 50%, uh, but whenever you open it, there is mixing. Uh, when you go in and out, there is mixing. But it can give you in general um, as up to uh, more than 30% oxygen source. Um, sometimes when you use a humidified air, um, it, it, uh, the, uh, the, the air can, um, um, and the mist can uh, obscure the, uh, the, uh, the plastic sh shell and then obscure the view and that might affect your clinical uh, eyeballing monitoring of the patient when he developed uh, like cyanosis or changing color or his conscious, consciousness status change. And this is an example of a tent. Of course, you can use bigger tent for a bigger pediatric patient. The last two that I want to talk is uh, is the uh, ventilation bags. There are two bags. We use it for PPV, or you can connect it to um, um, to ETT, or e e use it through mask. There is a flow inflation bags. Uh, there is the self-inflation bag and self-inflation that is inflated by its source. You don't need oxygen source. You can use oxygen source, but you don't need higher flow. You can, you can use it without uh, oxygen source because it's um, self-inflate if you want to use room air. Uh, if you want to connect oxygen, you still can connect it and it's, uh, uh, you squeeze it, you give the pressure and uh, you desequeeze it, you relieve the pressure and it's, uh, 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 reinflated by its own. And this is an example of self-inflation bag. You can connect to oxygen, but you don't need it because you don't need the flow to, uh, you can use it with or without reservoir. You can use a closed reservoir as this, or you can use open reservoir. It all will determine how much oxygen you are giving, if you're using oxygen, how much you are rebreathing and, and uh, all of that. And you can use different size of mask. You can use circular, you can use cushioned uh, type of mask, and you can have a pressure release. Um, if you can say like, I would uh, put the pressure relief 25, so when you squeeze, you will not give more than 25 centimeter of water. And there is a flow inflation valve, which is the, uh, the anesthesia. But this one is much better uh, for um, indoor activities. It can give you up to 100% if you close the valve. And it can give you less than that. You can um, 
you can control the flow, you can control. It needs a lot of experience though. It, it's um, much difficult than co to control than self-inflation valve. So this is an example of flow inflation valve. Um, you can see there's two types of valve. There is one valve here to control the flow, but there is another valve in here. Now in our unit, we don't use this flow. We keep it open and we hold it by our hand because that will help us much better to control the uh, degree of inflation of the, of the bag. And I am done. Thank you very much for listening and I'm open for questions. So let's unmute 